Hi, my name is Michael Dowden, and I am a Google Developer Expert in Firebase. I've been working with Firebase since 2015, and in the past year, my team has built seven different applications in Firebase. Everything I show you here is based on my experience building and deploying applications for my customers and clients. Security is one of the most fundamental aspects of any software project. This talk is going to introduce two models for authorization and show how to implement them using Firebase. Let's get started. Authorization is the process of controlling who is or is not allowed to access something. This generally involves three key components. Resources, the entities for which you want to control access. Permission, an action that can be performed on the resource. Privilege, the assignment of a permission to a specific user or group of users. Implementing authorization models is the focus of this talk, but authorization should not be confused with authentication, which is the process of identifying who someone is and then verifying that identity. Verification requires one or more factors, which may include knowledge. This is something you know, such as a password or PIN. Possession, something you have, like a cell phone or a cryptographic token, or a characteristic. This is something you are, which is typically a biometric, such as fingerprint, facial features, or retinal pattern. Authentication is well documented as a built-in part of the Firebase SDK. Since we're wanting to implement authorization within Firebase, it's important to understand what tools are provided to help us accomplish this goal. You can use a Cloud Function API to read and write data, which allows you a tremendous amount of programmatic flexibility and control. However, with this approach, you lose out on much of the power and convenience of the Firebase SDK, especially the real-time access to read data. You can use custom claims on the authentication token to manage this information, but you'll be limited to a strict 1000 byte limit. This works great for some things, such as assigning a user to a role or an attribute, but it doesn't work well when you need to associate a user with a lengthy list of resources. Also, you will need to use a cloud function to add the custom claim to the user's auth token. And you can use rules to restrict access to data and files, allowing direct client access via the SDK. But with rules, you are limited to a small number of simple declarative statements. The reality is, you will use two of these tools, or even all three, in the implementation of your authorization strategies. An access control list, or ACL, is a strategy commonly used for file systems and networks. ACL is an option when there are a large number of resources, particularly when you need to share these resources with other people. Some resources that I've used ACL for include customers, projects, and games. ACL works well with Firebase rules because both are designed for quick, simple lookups and a small list of possible permissions. The permissions we will implement using rules are admin for managing permissions, list for querying lists of resources, and then the standard CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. Firebase rules assume that deny is the default, and access is only granted with an explicit allow rule. In fact, it's not possible to write a deny rule because once an allow is found, permission is granted immediately without further rules being checked. Because of this, we'll follow this exact same paradigm in our access control list and exclusively write allow lists. When talking about Firebase databases, I receive the most questions about Firestore, so that is where we'll start, implementing an access control list in Cloud Firestore. In order to show the implementation, we'll need a demo application and data model. This is the data model for the resources we are trying to protect with authorization. We have a top-level data collection, which contains documents representing our resources. In my apps, this is where we would find projects, games, and similar resources that get shared between users. Under this resource document, we'll have one or more sub-collections representing different types of data related to our top-level object, each of which may contain multiple documents. This is the data structure for the access control list itself. We're using a resource-first approach, which makes it easier to manage permissions resource by resource. Note that the ACL works at the resource document level and assigns privileges to a user to perform an action. This example application uses Google Authentication. Because I'm running in the emulator, I can create new accounts on the fly. When we log into the app, a new user record is added to the database, 
in response to creating a new user account. This allows a client application to show a list of users and will allow us to build an admin page without requiring us to query users via Cloud Function and the admin SDK. This is the Cloud Function that generates the database record for the new user accounts. It triggers when a new account is created, pulls four fields from the user object, and then adds a record to the user's collection using the authentication UID as the document key. To lock down this user's collection, we create a rule that allows a user to read and update their own record. Since there is no create or delete rule, the admin SDK will be required for these operations, such as the cloud function we just looked at. All authenticated users will be allowed to list users in the system. Going back to our example app, when a new resource is created, the user who created it is automatically granted all necessary permissions to that resource. So any authenticated user can create resources, but only the person who created it has access to it from that point forward, unless they grant permissions to other people. This is a very common scenario in apps I've built and will work in a variety of situations. To enforce this, we will need some rules. Just like the users collection, resources can be listed by all authorized users. Any authenticated user can create a resource, however, they must correctly list themselves as a creator. The ACL rule allows users to view their own access permissions. This is the first half of the cloud function used to generate the ACL records when a resource is created. The UID of the user who created the record is taken as the created by property from the data itself, which we can do because the rules that we just looked at enforce that this is in fact the authenticated user. Using the admin SDK, we create an ACL record on the resource, granting each action to the creating user. Now when we log in as a new user, as expected, we can see a list of data, but cannot do anything with that data. The reason is that we have written rules to enforce the ACL. This function is essentially the magic sauce of the entire approach. It checks for the given resource ID and action that an authenticated user has as an ACL record. We can then use this function to enforce each action in a way that is easy to read. Only if the ACL record exists will the action be allowed. We can even use this function to protect subcollections and child documents of the original resource by using the wildcard in our match expression. Once we assign permissions to that second user, now they are able to read the document but not assign permissions. The rule that enforces administration, the changing of permissions, is written against the ACL collection itself. Once again, we use the test ACL function to look for the privilege. There are a few limitations to using Firestore rules to implement an ACL, but the first one you're likely to encounter is the maximum of 10 access calls per rule set evaluation. An access call is a get or exists call within a Firestore rule, and an evaluation is a single document or query request. There is an additional limit of 20 access calls for multi-document reads, transactions, and batched writes. This may necessitate paginated queries of 20 or fewer documents at a time. If you'd like to take a closer look at the Firestore ACL demo, all of the code we just looked at is available for your use on GitHub. Now that we've shown how to implement access control lists with Firestore, let's take a look at how to do the same thing in the real-time database, or RTDB. The first thing we need to look at are the available actions. When we're working in Firestore, the rules offer read and write actions, but also explicitly support the list, get, create, update, and delete actions we used in our example. However, the real-time database offers us only read and write actions, so we will need to add our own support for these extra actions. Before we can add these actions, we need to look at the way data is structured in the real-time database. While conceptually, we can continue thinking of it as a set of collections and documents, the underlying implementation is a JSON data store, this means that when we list objects within the data node, we receive not just a list of resource IDs or even resource objects, but also all of the subcollections and subdocuments. This has implications for our rules. In order to add support for the list action, we'll need to create an extra data node as shown here. By managing our own list node containing just the data we want included in lists, we can add support for our own custom action. It's a bit of extra data management work, but provides extra flexibility. 
The get action can simply be implemented as a read permission, but list is now implemented as an authenticated read on our list node. Create becomes a write rule that specifies the node does not yet exist, but data is currently being written. This expression can be combined with others to create complex rule sets. Just an exclamation point away, update is a write rule that specifies the node already exists with new data being written. And then delete is a write rule that specifies that the node already exists with no new data being written. This example project is essentially the same as the Firestore example with all the necessary adjustments. As before, when we create a new resource, the necessary ACL records are created on behalf of the current user. You'll notice that the first part of this write rule is selecting a create action. We're then combining this with a logical AND to make sure that the value of the created by property of the new record matches the currently authenticated user. Finally, there is a validate rule that ensures that the ID property of the record always matches the actual ID of the resource. Just like with Firestore, we use a cloud function to create the default ACL entries when a new resource is created. There are just two small changes. First, we include the UID as a data item. This is because the value changes method for RTDB doesn't return the ID of the resources, and snapshot changes can be a bit cumbersome to work with in some contexts. And second, we're generating an RTDB timestamp instead of a Firestore timestamp, which is simply a Unix epoch number. As before, when a different user logs in, they are unable to access the data because they don't yet have any assigned permissions. This is the full write rule that protects the resource. Because of the JSON syntax, this can be a bit hard to read, but has been formatted here to make it just a bit easier. There are three sections separated by OR, the double pipe, operator. The first is create, the second is update, and the third is delete which you can identify by the data new data exists statements. The update statement uses the root object to look up the ACL using the resource ID and currently authenticated user. It's simply checking that the ACL record exists. The delete statement works the same way with a different action name. Note that in RTDB, this one rule also covers subcollections and child documents as well, since permissions automatically propagate to all children within the JSON structure. Because pulling an object in RTDB pulls all child nodes, the data structure is directly related to your security. This can cause security challenges down the road as projects grow and change. Also, the JSON syntax of RTDB is a bit harder to write and maintain than the Firestore rules syntax. All of the real-time database ACL demo code shown is also available for your use on my GitHub. Role-based access control is another extremely popular authorization strategy that we can implement in Firebase. Role-based access control is an option when you want to manage permissions for a small number of roles and then assign those roles to a large number of resources. When a user is assigned to a resource, they are assigned to a role instead of to one or more actions. Roles can be assigned to any number of complex permissions that make sense in the context of the application domain. The way we assign permissions to resources with role-based access control is similar to access control lists. The structure here looks essentially the same, except that we always use users for our collection, and then each user assignment contains a specific role. Each role then has its own set of permissions. This could be implemented as a subcollection, but I typically implement this using properties directly on the role document. And here's an example of how you can use a Firestore rule to check for a permission within a role-based scenario. We start by looking up the user assignment, and then we look up the role. And finally, we test for the desired permission. This function can be used throughout our rules in the same way as the test ACL function we used earlier. There are a few advantages to this approach over ACL. The definition of a role can be changed anytime by simply updating a single document. Also, you can easily provide permissions beyond the scope of the basic CRUD operations. For example, you could create an admin permission that allows a user to grant read-only access to other users, but not any other form of access. This approach effectively doubles the minimum number of access calls, since you must look up the resource user assignment and then look up the permissions from the role. Also, the more creative you get with the permissions, the harder it may become to write the enforcement rules, and this may correspondingly increase the number of access calls required. Even though we didn't go into depth here, there's an entire Firestore role-based access control demo 
available for your use on my GitHub. This has been a lot of information, so let's take a moment to summarize. First, pick an authorization strategy, access control list, role-based authorization, or even something else. You can even use a combination of strategies. Select Firestore or Real-Time Database, or both, then design a structure for your data. Follow up by writing the rules needed to enforce the permissions you have defined. And finally, support these rules with cloud functions where necessary using the admin SDK. Thank you, and good luck with your projects.